How do pie charts work? How do we read them? The usual answer that you will see, which is that it's the center angle at the center of the slice, is almost certainly wrong. And it's surprisingly difficult to study th this question because the, the different visual cues that we use all change in the same way at the same time. To answer this question, I ran a new study, which I will talk about at the VIS conference in Vancouver this week. And in this study, I'm using 3D pie charts. Let's take a look. Why do we care about pie charts? Aren't they the worst visualization ever? Aren't you not supposed to even use them? Well, I'm going to talk about pie charts in future videos because I have some thoughts on this, but uh, I think it's important that we as the visualization community, as the research community, look into these charts, even if we don't like them for whatever reason, because they're being used by a lot of people all the time. And pie charts are a basic chart type. We really need to be able to understand this kind of chart and be able to answer simple questions like, so what is it actually that we use to read them? It's also important for making recommendations because some of our, the recommendations you see sometimes, for example, to not use donut charts because supposedly they're a bad thing, that depends on the correctness of the fact that we read those charts by angle. But if it's not how we read them, then it might not actually matter. And in fact, some of our studies show that, that it probably doesn't actually matter. So what makes pie charts difficult to study? It's that there are three visual cues that all behave in the same way. So we can't actually tell them apart. When you look at the, char the pie chart, at the slice in the pie chart, you see that the values represented is, first of all, as the angle at the center of the slice, which is also how we draw them, which is why it seems obvious that this is how we also read those charts. But then there's also the area of the slice and the length of arc on the outside of the slice as well. But which one is it that we actually use to read? My former PhD student, Drew Skow, and I did some studies on this a few years ago. And we had people look at these kinds of charts that tried to, to tease apart the different cues. So we showed people pie charts and donut charts. And we also showed them what we call the arc only chart and the area only chart, which are just basically charts that, that only represent one kind of visual cue at the same time. And then we also had a chart that we called the angle only, which did not have an area and did not have an arc. And we found that people did much better with the, the arc and the area charts than with the angle charts. So with that, we, we established, I think, that angle is unlikely to be the visual cue that people use to read these charts. But between arc and area, we weren't able to tell. And this is where 3D pie charts come in. When I take a 2D pie chart and I tilt it back, I get distortion. And in this case, it's actually relatively tame because I'm using parallel projection or also called orthographic projection or isometric projection. But in this case, I'm not using the central perspective that you would usually see, which creates a distortion also front to back, but simply a distortion that, that, is, that, that has to be there to, to see perspective at all. And what that does is that it changes the, the, the shape of a slice as it rotates around this pie. So if I'm starting with a 30 degree slice and I rotate it to the side, it ends up going down to under eight degrees in, in, in angle. And as I rotate it to the front, it becomes much wider and turns into a slice that, or into an angle that is over 90 degrees. And if I do the same thing on the back, it's the same thing because again, this is, this is parallel projection. So there's no difference between the front and the back of the chart. Now, how is this useful? Well, the interesting thing is that this distortion is different for angle and arc. The angle gets distorted by a certain amount as it rotates around. And this, this depends on not just the rotation, but also the angle, of course. So here you see different charts for different view angles and the amounts of distortion that happen between the smallest and the, and the largest, depending on the rotation around the pie. And it's actually more extreme even for the arc because the arc doesn't just depend on the angle, which has been distorted, but also the, the length of the, of the ellipse on the outside, which changes depending on which part of the ellipse you're on. So the, the distortion 
between the smallest and the largest for a 30 degree 2D slice is about 12 times between the smallest and the, and the highest value in angle, whereas for the arc length, it's actually about 40 times for from the smallest to the largest. So it's, it's, a, it's a vast difference. Now I've mentioned angle and arc, but not area. And this is the interesting part here, because area is the cue that doesn't actually change. So area, given a view angle, the area of the slice does not change no matter where the slice is along the, the pie. So as it rotates around on the side, it gets skinnier but longer, which is the same area as when it's wider but shorter in the back and in the front. And so now I have one Q that is not distorted as a fraction of the whole pi by my 3D shenanigans, but the other two are vastly distorted. So now what I can do in this study to tell them apart is model this distortion, model the effects that the different parameters have on what you should be seeing, and then compare the responses if I ask people to read these values and see whether they correspond to the distorted angle, the distorted arc, or the undistorted area. So the way I did this was to run this as an online study on a crowdsourcing platform called Prolific, where people would see some stimulus, like a 2D or a 3D chart in different rotations at different angles. And they had a reference chart with a little handle that was a 2D reference chart, and they had to mirror the value that they saw in the left chart uh, on the right. So what did I find? Well, it's a little bit complicated, but the main finding is that there's a very clear ranking between the three different visual cues. The best model fit, the lowest error compared between people's responses and the model predictions is area. The second one in, in model fit and, and, and error is the, the angle, interestingly enough, and the third one is the arc length. If we rule out the angle from the previous studies, then area is clearly the winner because we already ruled out angle and arc is the, is the lowest one uh, in, in my ranking. It is a bit more complicated than that. There are some more results in the paper. I'm linking that down in the show notes here. There, all the materials are online. This includes the paper, an appendix with some math, all the study results, some code from the study as well. So it's all, it's all there. You can take a look at all of that. There is a little kink here though, which is there's a possible alternate explanation. And that is that you could be looking at these 3D pie charts in front of you and tilt them back into 2D and then read them using whatever cue, whether it's angle or area or arc to actually read off the value. I don't fully buy this because the way people over and underestimate the values in the front and in the back suggests to me that they're really looking at this as a 3D object, but I can't rule it out, so I don't know. As they like to say, more research is needed. There certainly will be more studies that will need to look into this, but it's a possible alternate explanation. So with this study, I was trying to do two different things. One is to add some evidence to this question of how we read pie charts, because we're, we still don't know. I do believe that I'm adding a piece of evidence here to say it is area, but there are some, some potential issues here. The other piece was that I wanted to also try a different way of doing studies. And so usually studies are done by showing people stimuli and then measuring their responses for accuracy against the true value and then figuring out where they do the best or where they're the fastest. In my case, I'm actually modeling what I expect people to do when they use different visual cues. And that's not something I've seen a whole lot. I believe there's a paper there this year that actually does the same thing. But other than that, I don't know if this has ever been done before. So it's an interesting way where I make a prediction in terms of, of having a model that's quantifiable and then using that to, to predict the actual responses and comparing the responses to what, what I predicted to see which model is the best. An additional small point here is that I'm using these 3D pie charts not because I'm particularly interested in 3D pie charts, but because I think they work well as a sort of model organism, like in, in biology where people study fruit flies, not because they care so much about the fruit flies, but because they are useful as a model and as a sort of organism that is easy to manipulate and to work with. And 3D pie charts 
show that you can you can do the same thing in visualization where where you can control to an extent how the different visual cues behave and behave differently from each other. And on more of a meta level, I also hope to get more people to actually study pie charts because I think they're really important, not because they're such an amazing visualization technique perhaps, but because they are used a lot and we really need to get off our high horse uh, in the visualization community and just start studying them and understanding them a little bit better. Plus, I mean, what's wrong with pie? Thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it interesting. Check out the show notes below. I'm linking to the paper and all the materials there. I'm also linking to a couple of, of uh, pieces I have on my website that talk about pie charts. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel. Also, this is still a new channel. This is still an experiment. Please let me know what you think, any questions you have, any comments. I'm very interested in, in knowing what, you're, what you think. And I hope to see you again next time.